This is the Microsoft Cloud Show, episode 160. Today, CJ and Andrew sat down and talked to Mike Amerland at the Microsoft Ignite Conference on September the 27th, 2016. Welcome to the Microsoft Cloud Show, the only place to stay up to date on everything going on in the Microsoft Cloud world, including Microsoft Azure, Office 365, SharePoint, and the competitive landscape and related technologies. Just the information, no marketing, no BS. I'm Andrew Connell. And I'm Chris Johnson. Send us a tweet, either to the show at MS Cloud Show or to Andrew at Andrew Connell. Or Chris at Lounge Fly Z. As we'd love to connect with you. We're just two dudes telling you how we see it. The Microsoft Cloud Show is sponsored by Valid NL. Valid is a Microsoft Gold partner whose mission is to enable its customers to excel in their business through the innovative use of technology. Valid is always on the lookout for consultants, architects, and engineers. Do you know Azure, Business Intelligence and Analytics, .NET, Office 365, or SharePoint? Look them up on valid.nl. Good day, CJ. Yo. Hey. <laughs> yo, yo, yo. Yo, yo, yo. I'm doing pretty good, man. Yourself? Pretty good, actually. We're recording this after Ignite, this intro piece to the interview. And uh, I've had a nice long weekend of uh, sleeping in and recovering from Ignite, so I'm feeling a whole lot better. I'm probably a lot less croaky than... Uh, than the shows we recorded uh, last week. I was just about to say, you sound fresher. I know I sound, I'm sure I sound fresher. I damn sure feel a lot fresher than I was uh, uh, from the all the Ignite stuff that was going on. And even the, I know we recorded the intro for the last episode with Jeff Teeper. We did that once we both were at, respectively at our, our different homes, but I was still, it took me about two days to get my, uh, my energy level back from the conference. I was completely destroyed. And, you know, I think that first night, I got into bed and my eyelids were closed before my head hit the pillow. So, <laughs> yeah, I think I, I, according to my Kindle, I read one paragraph before it slapped me in the face. And then I just, <laughs> I, same thing, I just turned out, I absolutely passed out and almost did the same thing the next morning around 9 30. I sat on the couch for a minute and was just like, I didn't even lie down. I got the sleepy couch just yeah. now, but you know, I'm listening to an audio book right now called Extreme Ownership. It's by mm. uh, by these two uh, ex seals who run uh, business consulting now, and it's an absolutely brilliant book. I'm loving it, and I can't get enough of it. But this morning, I got in the car and and uh, started listening to it. And I was like, "What the? Where are we?" And I had to rewind like seven and a half minutes. <laughs> <laughs> to get back to the last part I remember before I fell asleep from the night before. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah, that's pretty funny. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. There you go. Hey, um, when we were at Ignite last week, I know that there was a lot of stuff that came out, a bunch of sessions that were conducted by Microsoft on the SharePoint framework. And you and I, we've talked a little bit um, to some community people about SharePoint framework, and you and I have offered a, a couple thoughts on it. But one of the things that you and I really wanted to do was to sit down with someone from Microsoft and I wanted to get we want to get their take on this and so one of the things we did on the the second day of the conference we were able to uh, convince Mike Amerland. I guess it didn't take too much convincing he was gracious enough to, to be awesome. eager yeah. yeah and jump on the show but we sat down and we talked to him about the SharePoint framework and I'm curious you know before we before we roll this uh, this interview it was a fairly fairly good sized interview here so we'll keep this intro short what did you think about you know what, what were your takeaways from from our discussion that we had with him really good actually I you know overall even just besides the Mike Am part I was actually pretty impressed with the way SharePoint is showing up at Ignite some good sessions some good speakers all that sort of stuff so overall, at, at the conference, I think SharePoint showed up in a pretty decent way. I think they really needed to, to be honest. I was disappointed, as I, as I know you were, with the dev side of the house as it came out of the May 4th event. They didn't really dive into enough detail, and the community's been clamoring for more information and things like that. So it was definitely high time that they showed up in a big way, and I think they did a pretty reasonable job of that. So that's that was really great to see. The other thing is... Mike Am has joined the technical marketing team now. He came back from other roles in Microsoft, longtime SharePoint guy. Now he's back. He really properly understands SharePoint development history. He was deeply embedded with it for many years. I worked with him on a ton of things when we were in the SharePoint engineering team together. This guy knows his stuff. He knows the struggles SharePoint developers are going through with full trust code and cloud migration work and all these kinds of things. And so I think having a powerhouse like that back on the SharePoint team is going to really pay dividends. So he's stepping into something that's already been decided, right? So they're off on this journey for this new SharePoint framework and things like that. So in many ways, he's stepping into a story that's already been started. But in terms of 
helping people understand it and helping SharePoint developers understand it, I don't think there could be anybody better than Mike to do that. I agree. I mean, I echo everything you just said. I was, instead of repeating everything, I, th- I think that, you know, the thing that really got me, the thing that really got me from our discussion with Mike, as, as our listeners, as you'll hear this in just a minute, is that I don't think that there's any kind of grand assumptions that are being made in terms of that people, this is a brand new thing and that people really need to, to, you want to give it a shot, but I don't think Microsoft is expecting everyone just to kind of drop everything they're doing and switch right over to this new development model. Mm. I also think too, I mean, they, one of the reasons they're doing that is from at least my takeaway with Mike is that, you know, they really want to get some feedback from running this in production, from getting people's reaction to running it in production and going to the next step. We've heard them talk about things like, and from community people say that they've seen, they've seen them work done around like say full page application running with this new SharePoint framework. That's not going to be in this first release that they're working on. They're focusing, what is SharePoint known for? Web parts. So let's you know make, make sure we have a good new web part, client-side web part framework. Let's get that nice and tight mm-hmm. before we and get some feedback and maybe make adjustments before we move on to the next piece. So I yeah. I definitely got that feel that they were that you know they're they're looking for that kind of feedback and not just trying to, you know, plow ahead. I get that try to focus, but to be honest, as a developer, that's all well and good, but unless I can build my app or whatever I'm looking to build using all the components I need, then it's not going to be a really viable choice until I can do that. So my, my concern is that, yeah, focus is great, but it may not be broad enough just yet to uh, to be a real thing for people. So I guess time will tell. I want them to move faster than they are. I think it's taking a ton of time. And you know, even between May and now, I'm sure there's a lot of spit and polish that's gone in, but they've got to move faster than they are if people if people are going to start adopting it for real-world application development. I agree with you on that one. That That is a bit of a frustration for me. I mean, I, I, got, to, I got a chance to see it late last year. We got to see, you know, we saw a little bit of what they did in May, and I know hearing from people that were in those different dev kitchens what their responses, what their reactions were. And I agree. I mean, they, they do need to move, especially with how, way, how fast everyone else is moving in the industry. You know, we saw from Ignite that Microsoft did deliver on their promises from the May the 4th event in terms of the modern list, modern libraries, mobile, all that kind of stuff, and a feature mm-hmm. pack for SharePoint 2016. But on the dev side, cards on the table. I've been doing this a long time. I've seen the, I've heard the promises before. I haven't seen them fulfilled. I'm really in the camp now of like, I got to see it deliver before I decide to say, you know, yeah, that's that's the thing that I want to hook, uh, hook my wagon to and the new model I want to hook my wagon to right now. So. Yeah. Yeah, the good news is I like the direction, like the the theory of the overall direction is uh, is pretty interesting. So I guess we've got to see them uh, follow through. Absolutely. Well, hey, without much further ado, why don't we sit there and roll our interview with Mike? Yeah, let's do it. All right, CJ and I are here again. This is Andrew with uh, at the Ignite Conference, Ignite 2016 in Atlanta. We're sitting here with Mike Amerland from Microsoft. Mike, how are you doing today? Ah, doing good, doing good. Good to be here. Good to see you again, man. So, um I know some of our listeners are probably familiar with your name. A lot of people may be, may not be. But hey, for the people who do, who are familiar with you, I mean, you're a familiar name, yeah. but we, we haven't seen you in the SharePoint space for a little while. So you kind of introduce yourself and tell us, like, where you been, man? So I do have a good, long last name that's kind of unique. It's kind of a yeah. grid of names in some regards, <laughs> which helps quite a bit. The grid of names. <laughs> that's the first time I've heard that. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it's it's good. It, it, works, it works for me. I've been working on... SharePoint off and on to some extent uh, since 2003. Uh, so I joined the team in 2003 and at the time I was working on the Windows SharePoint Services team and we were working on our developer platform and extensibility. So, you know, through 2007, you know, worked on things like features and some of the web part stuff, uh, some of the APIs, a lot of the things that uh, became part of the SharePoint platform. Uh, worked on, continued on through 2010 and, and various other features going on through that. I worked a little bit on some lab stuff, uh, you know, after that, which was kind of a cool way to experiment things. I mean, one of the really cool things about Microsoft is that there's so many things going on and, you know, they, you know, let, make it easy for you to, you know, try other things out to sort of explore and grow. And so uh, I guess I take advantage of that, but um, worked on labs for a little while and then came back to SharePoint and, and worked on the add-in model mm-hmm. as part of SharePoint 2013. Uh, you know, we worked to go ship that and get that out there. And then after that, I worked at Yammer in San Francisco. Uh, mm-hmm. We had acquired Yammer at the time and, uh, you know, it was a really great experience, you know, learning from the Yammer team. They did their startup. They worked very quickly, you know, learned a ton from them and, and really a great team. But, uh, you know, after that, my family was still in Washington, so I decided to come back. And at that point, I decided, well, let's go, tr- you know, try something web-based, something very uh, fast and iterative, kind of in some of, the, some of the same ways that Yammer was. Obviously, Office was getting fast and sort of very iterative as well. But, you know, I decided to go to the Bing Maps team for a while mm-hmm. and uh, worked on various features, worked on uh, a little bit of the website stuff and the map control that ships 
as part of Windows. So, gotcha. you know, Bing Maps has actually got like really great aerial 3D features. Um, mm -hmm. Sort of shout out to the Bing Maps team. Yeah. Uh, you know, we, you know, we flew over all these cities and got really detailed 3D imagery, and it's part of Windows 10. And it was pretty cool to expose, you know, some of the best imagery as part of you know that. So I love the Bing Maps bird eye bird's eye view still can't be beat. Yeah, yeah. on any really other cool. mapping. Yeah, platform. yeah. I mean, we you know you know we had planes, we'd fly over cities. It was it was really quite good. And um, yeah, and and that's that's what you can program against and develop develop against in Windows 10. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, and so then you came back to the SharePoint team. Now you're back with the SharePoint team. Yeah, and so exactly. What are, you, what are you doing today then? So yeah, so I'm actually now on the marketing team. So mm -hmm. I work to basically help take all the new things that we're building and, you know, spread the word about them. Obviously mm -hmm. get them out there, build build samples, build demos. I'm here at Ignite. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of things that we're doing to just get the word out and, uh, you know, help the team get some of the feedback, channel that in, um, all those kinds of things. So it's, it's pretty cool. I mean, I'm really just here because I love SharePoint. And I love sort of getting it back out again. I mean, I've obviously been working on it quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, and I love playing with code. So it's kind of a, a really fun job that suits me in some yeah. regards. Yeah, it's kind of certainly an exciting time, and, and I guess without your background, you'd be literally being dropped in at the deep end. But yeah. fortunately, you come from a long, a long history yep, of, yep. of in the dev space and in SharePoint, and we we worked together on yeah, WSS. Right. And okay. I worked, well, I worked for you for a while there, <laughs> and um, so I for guess all of that all of that accumulates, and uh, so hopefully you're treading water okay coming back in. Yeah, that. yeah, I do think I do think <laughs> that uh, you know there's been a, lot, a few times where I'm like, okay, it's a good thing I sort of know all about this because if it was completely blank slate, like you said, I mean, it would take a little bit of a while to ramp up on all the intricacies of, for example, how features are deployed in SharePoint and yeah. how workflow works and all those kinds of things and. And yeah, so I'm, it's definitely a great benefit, you know, especially for me since I'm now in the marketing role. I don't have to worry about building up all my technical skills. I can focus on okay, let's 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 be great at uh, getting the word out on SharePoint and all the yeah. cool things going on there. Oh, that sounds like a make SharePoint great again kind of thing. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> the debate was last night. I couldn't resist that <laughs> No, so you're in specific, what we wanted to sit down and talk to you about today was talking about this new SharePoint framework. That yeah, I know it was it was mentioned at the May the Fourth Future SharePoint event, right. and then we've seen a little bit of stuff come out about it over the last few months samples and everything so why don't you kind of explain it to our listeners we talked about it a little bit on the show yeah. we haven't gone into depth and the idea here for our listeners you know, what we're going to try and do today is we're going to talk more about like you know what what is it why would you use it what scenarios is it there to achieve and what what pain points is it trying to solve yeah so yeah sure so i mean part of it starts with you know as part of you know looking at the new modern experiences inside of sharepoint you know refactoring them to make them more quick and more inline and very easy to edit almost like you know working with an app on your phone, you almost realize that you need a new architecture for doing that. Sort of the ASP.NET post-back model that we had in 2007, mm -hmm. where every time you make a change, it goes to the server, server re-renders and drops out. I mean, this is not unfamiliar to any web developer that, you know, okay, you want to use client-side you know, application techniques to go build applications. Mm -hmm. And so as part of building out SharePoint itself, the idea was, okay, pretty quickly, we need to make sure that we're doing a lot more things on the client side and we need to have frameworks to support even the Microsoft stuff mm -hmm. so that they can build it more quickly and agilely. And so then the next question becomes, okay, well then, how do we go about sharing this with developers outside of Microsoft so they can get the same benefits? And also, you know, they're going to want, we think that developers are going to want to ship the same sort of inline reactive experiences where you just click a button and the, the web part updates or the app updates. Mm -hmm. So that was the idea behind taking the SharePoint framework, making it a framework in terms of good practices, good structures, packaging that all together and getting it out to developers. And then for developers who are building client-side web parts and client-side solutions, obviously that's been going on for quite a long time inside of SharePoint. Yeah, right. But you're doing it through client uh, content editor web parts and script web parts, and it's not very well structured. It's like a more workaround to just kind of use yeah. what you have to be able to get the stuff on the page, right? And, and not doing the right air traffic control when you have different libraries coming in and those kinds of things. And right. so what can you do to actually, what can we do to make that a more streamlined process? And so that was the idea behind SharePoint Framework. And SharePoint Framework is really a number of different things. I mean, you start with client-side web parts as a concept inside of SharePoint and all the built-in infrastructure that handles that. But it's also some build tools that Yeoman and, and Gulp and those kinds of things to sort of get your project started. And it's also debug tools, mm. so SharePoint Workbench, so that you can debug. So it's it's really got a lot of different facets to it. The, the things that are built into the product, but also the developer experience that uh, is there as well for, for folks to get started with. I think when, when somebody asked me about it a while back, I kind of described it as, in the old days of SharePoint, people were hacking stuff into the client UI and doing all sorts of yeah. weird things that, for good reasons, right? But it kind of caused them pain and caused Microsoft pain and when the, you know upgrade pain and all that sort of stuff and to me it feels like SharePoint framework in terms of the client-side web parts and the integration and the UI 
it's almost like starting to treat certain parts of the UI as an API. Yeah. Oh yeah. Right? And saying, here's our contract yes. that we are going to agree to to support you stuffing things into our front end. Yeah. And we won't break you. And as opposed to going and poking around and doing weird, wonderful things in the past. Right. Absolutely. We definitely want with the SharePoint framework to start, you know, with very tightly defined contracts. Okay. Here's the, the div element that you can go populate yeah. and fill out. Yeah. Um, please don't touch any other elements, you know, within the, the DOM rather than saying, okay, well, you know, there happens to be kind of a well-known element called MS dash yeah. nav bar that, yeah. uh, <laughs> that you can, you know, if you really want to customize navigation, we don't want to do that. Um, because obviously, you know, as we upgrade, as CSS changes, as elements change, it's, it's, it's really quite difficult to maintain that. Yeah. So we're using this as an opportunity to build something that is good for developers to get started with, but also robust for the long term so that, you know, as things upgrade, again, tightly defined contracts will make it a lot more robust. We had a lot of those challenges where I think there was a lot of learning in place when Office 365 first came out. We had Microsoft had the ability to update SharePoint in a much more iterative approach where we didn't have that so much on premise much. It's always waiting for a service pack or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, ser- service pack. But now with Office 365, Microsoft can go be much more iterative on the development. And with developers going through being able to change the UX in different ways because there was we weren't you know putting stuff on server side to work as all client side. You're using the best of what you could actually do, using the best tools. But there was a lot of I think learning from both sides. Like you know Microsoft learning about how developers are actually trying to customize SharePoint in the wild, seeing that when they roll a CSS change out, that's actually breaking a bunch of stuff because people aren't really aren't aware of it or taking a dependency on something that there was no awareness yeah, that there was dependency right, right, being right, taken. Right, right, right. So and. And now on the other side too is that you know developers trying to learn too you know hey look there are bounds that I have to play in that it's not just a complete canvas that I own now this is a service and working with developing within a service you've got to play in a certain playground right yeah but I think that the benefit at least of, of the, the prior model is that developers have tried lots of things and we've got a lot of you sure know, a huge audience out there of developers who do specific things that it can give us feedback around okay if you're gonna build a contract out for it that's great you know build this feature or build this feature yeah. so in, in a sense the paths have already been worn through and we know where to pave yeah when when it comes time to build this contract I think the other thing I want to say is we also want to make it more manageable too so right you know previously you could just get some you, know, you can still get some script inside of a page mm-hmm. But obviously, that becomes very hard to manage in terms of where all the places in my SharePoint right. tenancy farm where, where I've deployed script. Whereas with SharePoint Framework and its deployment model, the tenant administrators need to make the decisions about where to sort of put it in, but at least they have it in one place so they can manage it a little bit more tightly. So it's also not just a contract between Microsoft and the developers, you know, from SharePoint's perspective, but also between the administrators and the developers in terms of being able to manage it as well. It'd be really interesting to see a stat that, you know, like if there was a, a report that was run for on Office 365, like how many instances of jQuery.min.js were in people's tenants or document <laughs> library. It's like, oh my yeah. God, there's a <laughs> there's, there's an idea of how many things are, not only are there dupes that are out there, but it's like, oh my God, this, we see what people are doing. Yeah. yeah. So today, SharePoint framework, that what, you, what what is out there today? Let's just kind of like set the stage. Like where, where are we? Are we in a right. developer preview? Are we yeah. in a GA? Or where, where are we with this? So we had a number of developer kitchens where, you know, we asked folks in the community to come in and play with it and give their feedback. And that worked well, but now we're also in developer preview as of, I think, August 17th. Okay. And so now developers can just go to dev.office.com slash SharePoint. Uh, you'll find some links to go get started. And there's a lot of there's a lot of good documentation, a lot of good walkthroughs. Got some applause for that one. That's pretty good. Yeah. We yeah. Have, you guys can't loves, see the video. We got a huge crowd in front of us. We got range of crowd down the hole. walkthroughs. It's, it's, it's the killer feature. Um, so... <laughs> Yeah, so we have all of these uh, samples, and so you can just go download it and uh, you know get started. You just a couple of npm commands away from installing uh, the Yeoman templates, then you go run Yeoman, and you're off to the races in terms of developing with it. You can use, you can do it on a Mac, you can do it on a PC, you know, using whatever tooling you want to use. So yeah, you can get started with it. And we're also looking at all the issues on GitHub.com/SharePoint. Mm-hmm. So if you come into an issue or you see something you don't like, obviously we've been getting feedback yeah. um, about you know. People are very uh, have a lot of thoughts about how things should be structured, and a lot of um, opinions on how that should work, and we want to try to you know factor all that in and try to come up with a SharePoint framework that works for the maximum number of people and, and sort of adheres to the best practices as best we can. Gotcha. Um, so we're looking at those issues on GitHub.com/SharePoint and uh, working to iterate in the feedback. And since we've launched on August 17th, we've already made three updates. Gotcha. Um, so one of the one of the themes I think early on was when you go and create a uh, you know Yeoman project for. Uh, 
gives you to create a project with the SharePoint framework that the size of the folders is quite large. <laughs> yeah, the node modules so, folder, yeah. yeah it freaked so a lot of people out. It did, it did. And, and in a couple of weeks, we at least fixed it. We, it's still kind of large, mm. uh, to be honest, but uh, I think we cut it in half in, in the first release. And, and that was just, you know, the team is essentially watching GitHub issues and sort of fixing things. And I think it's really, having been around SharePoint for so long, it's definitely like really great just to see the rapidity of them responding to issues and right. you know, making the next update. So we've already done three releases in the past five, six weeks. Mm. And I think we're going to keep doing that while we're in developer preview, trying to get all the major uh, you know, kinks out of the way, all the major dissatisfaction issues mm. that we're seeing. And uh, then we'll approach general availability and, and get it deployed to more tendencies. I guess that's the other thing is that right now you can only work with it on a developer tendency. Mm -hmm. Developer tendencies are free. You can get them on dev.office.com, but we still want to move to the next phase where you can actually try it out on your you know, Office 365 team sites and those mm -hmm. kinds of things in preview. Mm -hmm. and, and then we'll move to general availability. You said something there I thought I think it's kind of interesting with this whole approach. I mean, you guys are taking a very, it's a very different approach from a traditional SharePoint site development model where like you know, everything is all done using the open source tools that a lot of the web community has been using, You're using Node for a lot of the tooling. Yep. That's NPM, Node Package Manager. Or, yeah. yeah. Well, they actually, it officially doesn't have a name. So I heard that Isaac from like Node say one time, he's like, everyone thinks it means that, but that's not what it means. Like, what like, does it mean? It's like, it doesn't have a name. Like, it's like GNU or something? Yeah. It's like, See, I was like, yeah. I found it. But anyway. As a tangent, but like that, using Yeoman and, and these other different tools here. So a lot of these tools, a lot of people that are that are, I would see that I've seen are jumping in and playing with the SharePoint framework are people that are traditional SharePoint developers. Like the three of us are sitting around the table here, yeah. and that world may not be as familiar to them. So when I saw like, you know, some people are going, "Oh yeah, the Node Modules folder is absolutely huge." And it's like, well, you look at it, and it's like, going, okay, maybe it was a little bit big. And yeah. then where you, the first rev that you guys went through, you definitely cut it down to a significantly yeah. smaller than that. But you look at people saying, "Oh yeah, it's still." big and I was like well all I'm doing right now is yeah. node projects. Let me go take a look at a couple of my node modules folders and looking at it like going, I can't say no, they're, they're about the same size. I mean, it's yeah. like, it's yeah. not, I don't think it, what you guys are doing. I mean, I appreciate the, the response that you guys had to it too, but I think that a lot of it too is, and I know this was one of the big, big threads that I got into. Yeah. Right, I, I, we had one. And I was like, I, said, I, I think you guys, the people are looking at going, let's, let's take SharePoint framework. And let's kind of set it aside and not talk about SharePoint at all. Like here, but that's a node project. That's yeah. what, that's just a characteristic yeah. of what, of what it is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Go look at your packages folder and a, and a new for a new get and stuff, I and mean, you're gonna have something similar. I can't say I've mean, ever I mean, looked I mean, at a node modules folder before until that thread. That was me too. I was like, oh, "How big is mine?" I'm like, "Oh, well, actually, this project I'm on right now is about the the, well, one of the the NG Office UI fabric node modules." One a clean download of that was 170 megs or something. Yeah. I mean, one of the cool things here at Ignite is we you know we're working on our demos for our sessions and sharing them back and forth. And the cool thing about it is that hey, because Node has all of its dependencies in it, you can just zip up a folder and send it to someone else, yeah. and they unzip it, and it just works. Yeah. Granted, the folder is a little you know big. You mm -hmm. want to use OneDrive for that rather than send an email, but like it's it's actually pretty darn handy that you can just go do that and it just works. Yeah. And that's you know one of the benefits of how Node works. And that's also one of the benefits too, the SharePoint framework, because you guys now have this thing called the SharePoint Workbench. Or yep. it's called the SharePoint Workbench. SharePoint Workbench. Okay, yeah. so you got the SharePoint Workbench, which allows me to build these like a, a component outside and, of the environment. Yeah, yeah, outside of the environment completely disconnect yeah. and like oh, I can actually test this local and see how it works. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And yeah. and you know, our demos and our samples actually sort of guide you down the path of here's how you mock out the data and then here's how you actually call the SharePoint list data. So it's actually a good thing too, because you're also just you know, mocking out the data. It's good testing practice. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. It's, a, it's the way you so, want to do that. So back to the node thing for a sec. So if we've got diehard.net developers listening and they're going, what are you doing to me? Like, why am I having to go learn all this stuff? What's the message for them? And, and are you going to spread some .NET love eventually or, or are they going to have to go learn node? To build a .NET, node eventually, or .NET love eventually or and or Visual Studio tooling to address yeah, that audience, both. that that's yeah, what they're really looking hand, for. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so I have a little bit of a confession that before I sort of came onto the team, I had been doing a lot, you know, I loved developing in C Sharp and building my own side projects, that kind of thing. And when I did JavaScript coding, I'd actually just go use Script Sharp, which is like <laughs> a project <laughs> from like four or five years ago. Oh, I love that that's, thing. That's, uh, but I loved it. Yeah, I love it. But you know, I was sort of also in the same camp of like a C sharp developer, and so you know, I've been doing some playing with JavaScript frameworks and all that kind of fun stuff. But you know, really, it was kind of my first time too. You know, just coming under the mm. SharePoint framework and playing with it. And you know, the cool thing about it is, and, and I think some of our you know sessions that you can watch here at Ignite will do this, is you can quit very quickly build an analog of everything that you see in in terms of what SharePoint framework is doing and what the .NET equivalent is. So you know, Yeoman is kind of like file new project, exactly. And, and mm. you know, uh, Gulp is kind of uh, MS Build. Mm -hmm. Yep. And, you know, so you have all these kinds of analogs of different things and different frameworks you can pull in. And once you kind of get that mental model in your head, mm -hmm. at least for me personally, you know, I was sort of, you know, it, it was easy to ramp up. And, and I was using SharePoint framework almost as an opportunity to sort of get myself better educated on 
React and Angular and those kinds of frameworks as well. And so I, you know, I was up and building my React components again. I was like, oh, it's kind of like XAML and, mm-hmm. yep. and that kind of mm-hmm. stuff. And and so I think and I hope that we sort of orient the SharePoint framework as if you're a .NET developer, yes, you're going to have to learn a little bit more than sort of maybe some other things. But as a result and as a side benefit coming out of it, you'll understand a bit about React. You'll be comfortable with it. You'll be comfortable mm-hmm. with all these various tools. You'll be comfortable with the way of working with these modern web development projects where you sort of pull in all these components and use Node to sort of pull in various things. And so I hope that we can use it as an opportunity to actually, you know, get more folks in. Yeah. Now, of course, you know, there are C Sharp and, and, and coding in Visual Studio is still a great experience. And, and you know, I like doing that too, of course. Yeah. And, you know, right now we have the Node tools for Visual Studio, which are integrated that can help you start to build those projects. But you know, we're working for with uh, to consider sort of deeper integrations and a, a sort of a more mm-hmm. clear path in Visual Studio over time. So you can use Visual Studio. You know, a lot of folks use Visual Studio Code mm-hmm. um, or their tools uh, of choice. Gotcha. Yeah, so I think we're working on the tooling uh, with Visual Studio. There are some tools today. But like I said, I really do hope, and I think that once you get over your first Hello World demo, mm-hmm. at least for me, it was like, oh, okay. So you kind of, you, you, you wind this path mm-hmm. to building your first web part, and then you can go back along the path and sort of explore in these various areas, play with Facebook, re- or react a little bit more, and those kinds of things. Mm-hmm. And voila, you, you're actually sort of ramping up on <laughs> a lot of the sort of JavaScript client-side development practices that are going on. Yeah, and a lot of this, I mean, I know that you guys, you don't force people down this path because it's, it's never a requirement, but it does help, I mean, you look at something like TypeScript, and TypeScript yeah. helps people that are getting into yeah. I, what, yeah. I, the thing that appealed to me with TypeScript as a traditional C Sharp developer who, you know, a couple of years ago, started moving more to the JavaScript camp and doing more stuff with Node and Angular and everything. That I started to really like TypeScript because it made me feel like I was doing like C Sharp ish yeah. style JavaScript. Yeah. I got the same kind of construct and stuff, and the, the changes that have happened with TypeScript over the last two years, specifically, you know, once Microsoft and Google got together with the, based on the Angular project and they really started to, to collaborate on it, the language has just gone fast forward. Now, I, I can't do normal or plain old JavaScript yeah. these days. I mean, it's all, all I do well, is TypeScript. TypeScript just because I like the, I like the extra, the, the, the yeah. feeling you get from a strongly typed language and stuff. Yeah. Like, I think, at least for me, the perception I get is not that it's a language barrier to jump into it. But most people's complaints about it are the tooling side, like a like a different build pipe and a yeah. different set of tools mm-hmm. to do CI and CD with potentially and stuff like that. So, like, I don't think it's the TypeScript jump that people are going to struggle with. I think it's more like, I like my Visual Studio, I like my build, my MS build, mm-hmm. I like my file new project and stuff like that. And I was kind of expecting that somebody in the community would have already done a VS project that has some sort of custom build task that web packs and uh, stuffs it in a in the right sort of package. So I guess we'll see. Oh, we, had, we might see somebody do that in the future. We, yeah, had, we, yeah. had, we heard people start saying things about like, you know, where's my WSP build or stuff like that. Right. Yeah, no, right. So. right. <laughs> I would, I would ex- definitely expect, you know, one way or another, we'll see more tools along those lines. And, yeah. and, you know, then you'll be able to use, you know, you can use it today with Node.js tools, but uh, you'll see more of that in deeper cool. integration as well. I mean, because that's the thing to remember about the SharePoint framework is, as we said, it's actually a lot of different pieces. I mean, you don't even have to use the build system. You don't even have to use right. Yeoman or Gulp. You right. can actually just, or TypeScript for that matter, it's client-side web parts you know, inside of SharePoint to start with, maybe with SharePoint Workbench as a debugging tool. But right. you know, you yep. could stub out all the other stuff if you wanted to. Gotcha. gotcha. So today, what we can do with SharePoint Framework today, you, we talk, you mentioned client-side web parts. Right. right. And that is, is, that, is there anything else to that? Or is it this, that's, the, that's the V1, that's where we are right now? Yeah, client-side web parts is what we're focused on as we sort of you know, really get the core of the framework figured out and iterated on and so I think as we approach general availability that's that's the focus that we're working on but okay. yeah. you know we've you know as we were talking about earlier we definitely received a lot of feedback around hey I was doing this you know JS link type of customization doing mm-hmm. custom field views doing custom uh, list views and mm-hmm. forms and those kinds of things you know doing custom actions that come with JavaScript that mm-hmm. can really do some powerful things and so we get that feedback all the time mm-hmm. and so that's definitely something we're looking towards you know and, and again trying to strike the exact right balance of okay having clear contracts that will probably be a little bit limiting but I actually think that um, I think there's definitely a way forward where we can sort of say, okay, here's here's the five divs you get to go play with. Yeah, have yeah, fun. gotcha. And that's just an idea. And we'll just an idea. I don't know what it'll look like. Sure, yeah. And I'm not trying to get like you know features on where you're going and like and commit with that stuff, but just trying to get a, a feel to make sure you know where where we what, like where are we today and like what can we kind of look at? Like there's this isn't the this is just a web part framework. This, that's not that this is the new web part framework and then that's it. I mean, this is you guys are looking yeah. at what, what yeah. this is the this is the model because this is what you're using to build SharePoint now too, right? Mm-hmm. This is not just a, it's not like, not like what the added model where we had, you know, the added model was mainly for everybody but Microsoft, right? It was for com- enterprise developers and for ISVs where SharePoint framework is and you're building it, your customers are 
SharePoint engineering and yeah. third party. Yeah. Right. So yeah. that they're you're taking a big they're taking big, big dependencies on yeah. what you guys are doing. And, and that's 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 a theme we've wrestled with as we sort of go with SharePoint framework and developer previews. We are using it internally, so some of the things around you know the complexity and the size of it stem from like, well, this is how we're using it internally and we have these kinds of requirements, you know, versus like you know, balancing that out for the first time developer and seeing all these dependencies and those kinds of things. So we, again, it can all be very flexible because there's no requirement in order to get a client side web part in, 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 in SharePoint that you use the exact same build process that we do. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're working on those things, but that's, that's again, you'll see some artifacts that stem from that, which is we're actually using in SharePoint too. Gotcha. So what about so switching gears a little bit, the mix between enterprise developers versus ISVs and who it's for. To me, it feels very focused on enterprise developers yeah. right now. Is that the goal going forward, or is it also to sort of broaden it a little? There's a couple of things, I think, that, that make me say that, right? And one is when we worked together on Sandbox Solutions yeah. many years ago, security and isolation was a big deal, right? right? And and the new SharePoint framework that doesn't seem to be of much of a consideration currently. It's an admin. It's an admin install. You're putting JavaScript on a page, and it's got a bunch of a bunch more uh, a bunch more opportunity to go do things in a non-isolated right. manner, unlike Sandbox and unlike Add-ins. Right. So to me, that's kind of what guides me towards thinking it's more just for enterprises. And then for me, coming from an ISV side, I love the idea of it, but obviously it's a little bit of a step backwards in terms of deployment from my perspective around lack of a store and central distribution model and stuff like that. So are those things that you guys are thinking about? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, I, absolutely. That's why we're still, you know, looking to do more work with add-ins and that's that's kind of the role that add-ins fill in terms of, you know, they have very, you know, because all the code is external, it's running on separate services and then administrators make very, uh, very controlled decisions about, okay, I'm going to let this application have write, writes, or rewrites yeah. and those kinds yeah. of things. That's why add-ins really sort of serves a very valuable role. We've got the store behind that. I mean, you need to have a very controlled trust model if you want to like, expose things through a store. Yeah. So that's a really important capability. We're going to keep evolving that with, with add-ins. We're going to keep improving the store distribution mechanisms that we have and streamlining that process. Uh, and so that's why add-ins kind of you know, complements SharePoint framework in some ways. Of if you want more control, the add-ins is kind of the route to go. I think we'll bring more of these together over time too. Yeah. Um, and, and you know, you could build maybe I don't know. I'm just saying, you can build like an add-in with SharePoint framework type concepts and those kinds of things. That'd be awesome. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Feature request number one. There you go. <laughs> make uh, the folder size smaller and make there. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I mean, but but that, that that was the other side of the balance too, which is obviously with add-ins we get the feedback that okay, you know, extending through these you know rectangular iframes, uh, yeah. you know. You you know, leave something to be desired in terms of flexibility. And so if you are part of an enterprise development shop and you want to, you know, do a very tight customization that, that really conforms to your requirements and, and you, you know, it just doesn't logistically make sense to do that with an iframe, yeah. you know, literally about the shape of rectangles on a screen, yeah. um, then, you know, SharePoint Framework can be that tool. And, 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 you know, obviously it does assume that you're, you know, imbuing a lot of trust into those developers that are delivering SharePoint Framework solutions. Um, so, so, yeah, so we see them as complementary and and, uh, and again, we'll sort of bring them together, I think, over time as well. Mm-hmm. Nice. Very good. So folks building these things, you know, it's, it's, it's one thing to uh, write some JavaScript or TypeScript or whatever and do some things in a browser. But, you know, as you know, like, no good application is just client side, right? It's right. usually calling APIs and stuff. So what's the What's the kind of strategy with integration with the graph? Yeah. With SharePoint APIs? Yeah. Um, things like that. And then also, obviously, from an ISV's perspective, third party APIs outside there, somewhere out on the internet that uh, people might want to call. What's the kind of the general direction you're going with? Uh, API integration with these things. Yeah. So right now, so right now, what uh, the SharePoint framework has is a wrapper for our REST-based APIs that are exposed inside of SharePoint. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's you know some key objects that you can use to just get list data and site data, and, and also the context that comes down with the page and those kinds of things. Obviously, you know one of the key themes is graph and mm-hmm. making sure that we continue to expand it. There's there's still some things that we're working towards to make the the integration of the various security with that a lot smoother. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. Uh, a lot smoother. So that's that's still something we're working towards. Um, so stay mm-hmm. tuned. But um, uh, cool. that, that's kind of the main manifestation of where we see, you know, you know, applications across Microsoft exposing their features, and SharePoint, you know, would be one of them as well. Mm. Um, so that's definitely something we're working towards. And then, you know, in terms of in terms of third parties, you know, if you're hosting services and those kinds of things, you know, you know, using various you know implicit flows or what have you to sort of authenticate would be one way to go. Gotcha. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, that'd be really helpful. I was in uh, the Dev Kitchen three and started playing around, and and you know, the first thing I wanted to do was go call the graph. Yeah. And, uh, yes. 
and it fell into the too hard basket for a very lowly developer like me. <laughs> so I'm glad there's some smoothing of that path coming. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. It's definitely. I mean, you know, one of the other themes is you know we're we're working to expand our, our you know, support of Microsoft Graph across various things, and so yeah, it's, it's nice. very key. Cool. So, what do we see? Like, what's next for? What, what do we? What can people like look for? I mean, looking for like milestones. Are there yeah. schedule milestone drops that people are going to look for? Is there those certain dates that people are going to be looking for? And like, what things can they see? What can they expect over that time? We talked a little bit about you know seeing like the, the, the little bit better story around the graph, being able yeah. to call the graph. Yeah, I think the key focus now is just working towards general availability so that people can use it in more in types prod. of tendencies and use it in mm-hmm. prod. Mm-hmm. You know, we have I don't want to say modest, but we have obviously client side web parts as our first waypoint, if you will, of, of you know supporting more client side development inside of SharePoint. So that's the focus to get it out there and to get it more widely distributed. Mm-hmm. We've gotten, for example, uh, you know we've already gotten like a lot of partners who have built you know uh, web parts uh, that they're sort of featured. So, you know, they're just waiting to, you know, get to GA so that people can actually use them. Are you so. showing some of them off at the show? Yeah, actually we are as part of our sessions. And uh, if you go to SharePointShowcase.office.com, cool. uh, you can also, uh, you know, check them out. I mean, they're, again, they're developer preview because the SharePoint framework's in developer preview. Sure. Yeah. Um, but, but you know, again, folks are a little bit chomping at the bit to get it out there. And so we're focused on getting to GA. Can and you, then I think uh, after that, we'll, we'll be looking towards you know, some of the things we talked about, like other extension points, okay. um, you know, and graph integration as well. Gotcha. Got, any, got any favorites that... Uh, that that well, you really like? Well, right. So we actually had the contest last night, and uh, we sort of announced the winners at our Dev Kitchen contest last night. Uh, you know, what's a, what's a hackathon without a contest and yeah. you know, <laughs> moving prizes, right? Um, <laughs> that's, that's the most key ingredient. Um, so yeah, so the, the the winner of it was actually Groups uh, by a team uh, company called Powell 365. Okay. Uh, so they actually you know take the Groups experience of you know of Office 365. They make Groups a lot more discoverable inside your SharePoint site. You click on them, you get a lot of contextual information. It was really well done. You know. Really sort of integrated and, and slick and, and sort of pretty nice. Uh, you know, second place winner was uh, was a document dashboard from Content and Code. And so what that allows you to do is it shows you stats about the types of documents you have in your site. And what was really nice about that, they really made a, a big use of the SharePoint framework that had a property pane that was super reactive. So you could just go flip things and your charts would just sort of update in line, mm. uh. um, which is kind of, you know, that's... It seems like a simple thing, but that was kind of the promise of the SharePoint mm. framework and sort of modern development inside of SharePoint that you don't have to wait for the page to refresh and the web part tool pane as it was, you know, as we put it together, yeah. you know, back in the day where, okay, well, that's a post back to the ASP.NET control. Yeah. And now it's a lot slicker and a lot more integrated. So they were able to deliver a very rich customization experience that just, again, works like an app and that kind of thing. Nice. The third was uh, Bamboo Solutions with uh, Panda Pull Part. So you can actually just do very quick inline, you know, just as... What was nice about that, it's a very simple, streamlined experience, and, and again, you know, just easy to set up and easy to see results. Oh. You have to go check them out. Yeah, so what was, the, what was the URL for the uh, showcase? SharePointShowcase.office.com. Cool. SharePoint, we'll make sure we put that in the show notes when we publish this, too. So, yeah. Awesome. Anything else you think we should we should definitely uh, know about the SharePoint framework? Well, so, so SharePoint so SharePoint framework is obviously like a huge thing that that we're featuring and and you know it's part of the you know user experience you know that we're building out for SharePoint and we hope that developers take a lot of advantage in, advantage of it. Uh, we also have other things. We have web hooks that we're talking about. Oh yeah. Um, for example, you know web hooks plus Azure functions. We we're talking a little bit about that beforehand. I think that's a really so much about what people want to do inside of SharePoint is actually behind the scenes in terms of processes and working with documents. Mm. And you know web hooks are a similarly updated way of, of getting you know notifications out of SharePoint so that you can do lots of great things on them. You know, we've got things like uh, Power Apps and Flow to sort of build workflows and, and user experiences and applications on top of SharePoint. And then also, as I mentioned earlier, we have sites and lists that we're mm. working to expose inside of the graph. Mm. Um, so if you're used to getting uh, your data through Exchange from Graph, now you can get the sites and lists, and you can actually go into files and work with files and all that kind of thing. So, gotcha. Very cool. So across the board, I mean, this is a little bit of my the session on the future of SharePoint roadmap that I'm going to be doing a little bit later today that you can probably view online by the time you see this, but <laughs> just covering those sort of those four major areas of SharePoint of you know user experience, processes, and, and data. And we've got gotcha. cool things coming out on, on all those fronts. Awesome. 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 Well, it's nice to see it's nice to see a whole bunch of SharePoint love in the dev space yeah. again. Yeah, and uh, it's gone a couple of years of not dark, but not high either. Yeah. So it's nice to see the love come back and uh, and also have a familiar and friendly face in the SharePoint ecosystem. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's great back being here and seeing everyone you know seeing everyone around again and and uh, you know it's it's. Seeing all the energy is is just really quite awesome. Yeah. So, what's the best way for people who are listening to this to connect? Obviously, dev.office.com to go get the tenant and start playing yep. around. 
um, and whack SharePoint for the framework and yeah. things. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's a, it's a small victory for, for me personally, but it's like, okay, we have dev.office.com slash SharePoint. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> you know, we're sort of building out, you know, more content, more resources for developing on SharePoint. Obviously, you know, lots of things on the SharePoint framework, but we also want to pull together the entire story of, you know, even if you're building, you know, you know classic web parts for on-premises deployment, we want to pull together all the right resources so that you can do that too. So the docs um, will be there too and all those. Yeah, well, all the links to the documents and try sure. to pull more of that together and, and, and give folks a bit of a better landscape for everything that's going on with SharePoint today. Cool. Yeah. Very cool. Well, thanks a lot for taking the time to sit down with CJ and I, and I'm sure everybody's going to be interested to hear, you know, about what what's going on with the SharePoint framework. So, um, yeah, thank you very much, Mike. Good to see you again. Yeah, it's good seeing you guys. Yeah, thanks for coming on the show. Did you like this episode? Send us a tweet about it and drop us a five star review in iTunes. Word of mouth recommendations are the most effective ways for us to grow the show. We'd really appreciate it. If you have a question for us, go to MicrosoftCloudShow.com/questions, where you can submit it as text. We'll record it as a wave or an MP3 and provide a link so that we can play your question on the show. Our theme music is an excerpt from Evaporated Air by Monk Turner used under Creative Commons. You can subscribe to us on iTunes and the Google Play Store by searching for Microsoft Cloud Show or via RSS at microsoftcloudshow.com. We will also find show notes of each episode. You can also find us on Facebook, searching for Microsoft Cloud Show or on Twitter at MS Cloud Show. And finally, sign up to our mailing list by heading to our website and entering your email to interact with us, participate in upcoming interviews and other cool stuff. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.